And basically, um, this person, Perry Marshall, posed the question, and the debate went on for over three years on the message board. Um, three years is a long time, and not one person could actually refute his question and give it an answer from it. And what I liked about it is that Perry Marshall gave answers and actually gave information and posed the question syllogistically. And the people that he sourced in all of his responses were from Stanford University, from, I mean, th these guys were respected in their field. And he actually used people that weren't creationists, they were scientists and they believed in the science. And he used that for every single one of his responses. Um, anyway, I'll read you the, the question that he poses. Uh, gentlemen, and this is a quote from him. Gentlemen, the starting point of the discussion is my central thesis, which is, one, DNA is not merely a molecule with a pattern. It is a code, a language, and an information storage mechanism. Two, all codes are created by a conscious mind. There is no natural process known to science that creates coded information. Three, therefore DNA was designed by a mind. If you can provide an empirical example of a code or language that occurs naturally, you have toppled my proof. All you need is one, signed Perry Marshall. Then he goes on to state, and I quote, I define coded information as a system of symbols used by encoding and decoding, uh, by an encoding and decoding mechanism, which transmits a message that is independent of the communication medium. Examples of code include English, Chinese, computer languages, music, mating calls, and radio signals. Codes always involve a system of symbols that represent ideas or plans. Other examples include, yes, bee waggle dances, bird songs, whale songs, and ant communication by pheromone. Since all the above are derivatives of DNA, my challenge to naturalists is to cite a single example of coded information that occurs naturally outside the realm of life. Outside the realm of DNA, all you need is one example. Signed again, Perry Mar People tried using the, you know, patterns and snowflakes and all that different stuff, and he refutes it, like I said, scientifically and which, with, with scholarly uh, information on each of these. This discussion continued for more than four months and 300 posts. At the end, nearly all participants dropped out, having failed to topple my proof or produce any of new objections that had not orally been, uh, been addressed. In the course of a very detailed and vigorous discussion, my arguments did not suffer the slightest injury. There were six major counter-arguments to information as proof of intelligent design. You can follow these links for a thorough summary of the discussion threads. One was the objection that DNA is not a code. It is by universal definition. Two, the objection that information is not real. It is because it produces real effects. Three, the objection that information has no objective meaning. It does because a message produces results that are just objective and specific as the message itself. Four, the objection that random processes can create information. They can't. Five, the objection that codes do occur naturally. They don't. Six, the objection that the nature of the designer cannot be determined. In very broad terms, it can.